We've heard a lot of controversial topics today. There have been topics to wealth gaps. There have been topics to incidents dealing with biking accidents. But today, I kind of want to dive a little deeper into a surface that we're all maybe unfamiliar with due to that we're just students. And when I say this, I don't mean to be offensive to anybody. I don't mean to step on any toes. But today, I just want to inform and possibly persuade you all of the problem that is going forward. So today, let's talk. Let's have a conversation about paying collegiate athletes. So a lot of people are excited about this. I love this group because we see that this needs more attention than what has been given. But today, I want to dive a little bit in deeper and I want to grant us with some statistics. I want to grant us with some percentages of understanding why this is a very important topic. So this is my story. I was very blessed to be a four-star athlete at DeSoto High School. I graduated class in 2018. I was ranked the number 237 athlete in the country. I was ranked the number 30 athlete in Texas. I was blessed to be an honor All-American, blessed to be invited to the Army All-American game. I was a Tom Landry finalist, and I won the late witness of Christian Athlete Year of the Year Award. So the first statistics that I want to share, and it will bring me a little deeper. For me being a four-star athlete, Realize this, I could generate $350,000 per year annually just for being a four-star athlete. Let's dive a little deeper. These are statistics from the NCAA, and it simply says that college athlete skills bring in more than $14 billion in annual revenue to any collegiate sports program. NCAA generates about $165.25 million in revenue from TV and marketing, and that's just TV and marketing by itself. The NCAA men's basketball tournament, a lot of us watch the games March Madness, they brought in $900 million. Nice. $900 million. Yeah, it is nice, but wait until you find this out. <laughs> NCAA women's athlete basketball tournament brought in $15.1 million. Baylor University competes in 18 sports here on the university campus. We have a total of 670 student athletes. 277 of those athletes are men, 393 are women, and the total revenue that we bring in is $67.8 million in revenue funding, dealing with each and everything that comes from TV, marketing, ticket sales, all of the above. Now, with all of the statistics that I provided you, get this is how much student athletes get from being on campus from everything that I just shared with you. Zero percent. We don't get it done. Planning in the COVID year was very stressful. A lot of people opted out. A lot of people had a lot of questions and concerns. Dealing with something that we were not used to. Why should we play? Why should we put our bodies on the line? Dealing with the virus, dealing with the pandemic that we all just came from. That provided a lot of stress, a lot of agony, a lot of questions and concerns that we all had. But as the NCAA said, let's move on, let's play anyway. But we don't have a dime in our pockets dealing with those things. So let me just share with you all a little bit of why student athletes and collegiate athletes in general should get paid. And maybe I will have your persuasion of understanding why this is a problem. Time. So the very first three things that I think about with time is studies, not being able to get a job to provide for yourself, and the things that we go through daily, which is having practices, having games on the weekends, workouts, film sessions, tutoring, all of the above. So here at Baylor, and it's very funny that I say this, I, when I first got here my freshman year in 2018, I was told this, BJ, you're here now, so realize this, school is first, football is second. And when I understood the numbers in the hand, but what he was saying, what he was doing, it actually clicked. Yeah, they say we're here for school, but not all the time do we have time to sit down and thoroughly understand the material. Not all the time do we have the time to sit down and write our essay papers. So a lot of people wonder, well, why student athletes always sleep? Why student athletes always in the back of the class? Well, maybe because no one really realized that we spend countless hours at the facility, countless hours working out, countless hours having film sessions. Or then your coaches come to you, oh, well, you don't really take this game serious. Oh, well, you can get cut tomorrow. All of these things that are being thrown in our face at times, we don't always have the appropriate time and manner to manage ourselves to well be equipped. So I definitely say time. We can't get a job at the moment because that interferes with all our practice schedules, with workouts, with tutoring, and then we have class on top of that. Like I said before, I don't want to step on any toes. But I simply want to inform you all that students have it great here. And the only reason we say that is because at times students get a chance to get up, they get to make their own schedule. They get to say, hey, you know what? I want to block out this time for workouts. I'm going to block out this time to grab me a snack and then go home and take a nap. And maybe my next class is there. 
At times, student athletes, our schedule is bam, bam, bam. We wake up in the morning at 6 a.m., we have workouts and we're going to class with a half shower. Sometimes people may smell musty. I don't speak for them, I speak for myself. <laughs> I shower, I do everything I need to do. And when I walk into class, I'm simply there to get my education as much as I can. The next thing that I say is practice games workout. Everybody knows practices like this, games on the weekends that everyone comes to support. And we're so grateful for you all's support and encouragement through everything that we do. Injuries, realize this, dealing with injuries, everyone just saw Gavin. And I wanted him to stay here for a specific reason because he broke his foot. So people don't really realize that he may not, he may not have the full usage that he used to have of his foot before the injury occurred. Lifetime effects. We had to deal with the injuries and potential disabilities. I wanted to share a picture with you all. This is Inky Johnson, a famous, phenomenal speaker, motivational speaker, played ball in Tennessee, paralyzed his left arm all the way down from his shoulder, all the way down to his fingers. He can't use it. That Prescott, everyone knew about the injury that occurred with him. Very drastic. Every, right here, my picture to the bottom right, we have a person that's dealing with CTE. And then over here to my left, we had a young man that was paralyzed due to contact within football. And I make all of these statements to say this. Realize the lifetime effects, the rehab to deal with injuries, the potential disabilities. For the fact that money is very limited for student athletes, if we get a chance to go to the NFL, thanks be to God. But it's 1.6% of student athletes that get a chance to go to the league from college. And all of those student athletes have dealt with some type of setback due to injuries. So realize this, when you don't have a dime in your pocket, you have to still try to treat your body the way you have to treat it. And then there you are living in debt, living in those things. But it's only for the fact that you put your line on the body for your program, for your institution. The status, the culture's status, name, image, and likeness, and to, to boost the university that we attend. Matt Rule was a great coach here, came from Temple. He's known for rebuilding programs. He's now with the Carolina Panthers. From the time that he got here, we went 1-11. Last year, we had a chance, well, not last year, but 2019, going into the 2020 year, we had a chance to go to the Super Bowl, play in Georgia. He had a great contract extension that was worth a plethora of money, millions of dollars. I believe it was $23.5 million. Due to the fact that he re rebuilt the program, and he was allowing us to get back on our feet from the deficits that we had when Art Browse was here. So realize this, his contract increased. He had an extension. Coach Drew for the, for the uh, basketball team has an extension. Realize this, out of all of the money that our coaches make, athletes do not get a dime from that. Due to NCAA rules of saying, oh, it's illegal, you can't give them money, you can't purchase this for them, that for them, that has to be an in-school, in-house thing to do. Name, image, and likeness. Corey Coleman here won the Belinda Koff Award. He is one of the main reasons why Baylor is such a prestigious university institution dealing with football alone. If you go to the football facilities, you see the championships on there. If you go into the indoor facility, you see Corey Coleman up, you see RG3 up, you see all of these names. That deals with name, image, and likeness. When they were here, they didn't get a dime from bringing as much attention, much profit, much revenue as they brought in for Baylor University. And it boosts the university. It boosts the attention to realize, man, these are great athletes coming here. So if they're great athletes, they must have great grades. So if they have great grades, then Baylor University must be great at all. And I'll just leave that statement there blank because some of us have different feelings of Baylor being a great institution or being an ill institution. So this is what I want to say to bring it a call to action. How can we continue to make this, how can we continue to emphasize this problem? How can we continue to make a broad statement that NCAA athletes, collegiate athletes, women athletes, male athletes, whatever the case may be, should get paid. Last year, dealing with the COVID year, there was a hashtag that went around that said, not NCAA's property. And that was simply letting it be known that, hey, realize this, we're not just gonna be here making all this money for you all, and we're gonna be empty pockets. We want to continue to have this conversation time after time after time again to bring awareness to the problems, to bring a position to let it be known, hey, these college athletes are putting a lot on the line, and for us to be able to just give them something, a token of appreciation, will be very worth the time that we have. So today I want to persuade you all to realize this, the position that your peers are in that are student athletes, these are some of the things that transpires within our everyday life. These are the things that we deal with. So I want to encourage us to continue to have this conversation and realize collegiate athletes have a life, but sometimes it's not as broad as you all's life is. Thank you.